I will give one more scientific fact mentioned in the Quran before I end my talk. The scientist by the name of Professor Takrashan, Professor Takra Takrashan, who hails from Thailand, and he spent a great deal of time in doing research on pain receptors. And previously, we human beings, we thought that the brain was only responsible for feeling of pain. Later on, the doctors, they came to know that there are certain receptors in the skin which are responsible for feeling of pain. That's the reason whenever a patient of burn injury comes, the doctor takes a pin and he pricks it in the area of burn. If the patient feels pain, doctor is happy. It's a superficial burn. The pain receptors are intact. If the patient does not feel pain, the doctor is sad. The pain receptors have been destroyed. It's a deep burn. Professor Takrashan was shown a translation of the verse of the Quran and was asked to comment on it. The Quran mentioned in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 56, that as to those who reject our signs, we shall cast them in the hellfire. And as often as the skins are roasted, we shall give them fresh skin so that they shall feel the pain. The Quran says, as often as the skins are roasted, we shall give them fresh skin so that they feel the pain, indicating there is something in the skin which is responsible for the feeling of pain. So Quran says, as to those who reject our signs, we shall cast them into the hellfire. And as often as the skins are roasted, we shall give them fresh skin so that they shall feel the pain. We know Hitler, who's supposed to be the human being, who's the biggest terrorist in the world. History says he has killed six million Jews, incinerated six million Jews, has burnt six million Jews alive. Even if we catch Hitler today, what punishment can you give him? What punishment? Maybe burn him. Is it justice? It will compensate one death only. What about the remaining five million? 999,999. What about that? Allah says, it mentioned in the Quran, as to those who reject our signs, we shall cast them in the hellfire. And as often as the skin is roasted, we shall give them fresh skin so that they shall feel the pain. If on the day of judgment, if Hitler has to be burnt a million times, it can be done. Six million times it can be done. We can't do in this world. When Prophet Takrat Agashan was shown this verse of the glorious Quran, he could not believe how could a book 1400 years ago mention about pain receptors, he could not believe it. Later on, after verifying with other scientists, as well as Prophet Keith Moore, and reading the translation, he was so impressed that in the 8th medical conference, held in Riyadh. In the conference he said, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. There is no God but Allah and Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. <laughs> now coming back to our atheist friend, that who could have mentioned all these things in the Quran 1400 years ago? The only answer the atheist can give you is the creator, the manufacturer, the inventor, the producer, the maker, this creator, this manufacturer, this inventor, this maker, we Muslims call as Allah. We call him as God. So with the help of the Quran, we can prove scientifically the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With the help of the Quran, it is the only way I can prove scientifically. Because science today has not reached that far to prove everything. Many things what the Quran says, science hasn't reached that far to prove it. So it goes in the ambiguous thought. But there is not a single verse in the Quran which is unscientific. Albert Einstein, the, the famous physicist and the Nobel Prize winner, he had said, science without religion is lame and religion without science is blind. Let me remind you, the Quran is not a book of science, S-C-I-E-N-C-E. -E. It's a book of signs. It's a book of ayats. It's a book of signs, S-I-G-N-S. And there are more than 6,000 signs 
more than 6,000 ayats in the glorious Quran, out of which more than a thousand speak about science. I am not trying to prove the Quran to be the word of God with the help of science. Because for me, science is not ultimatum. It's not ultimate. For me, my yardstick is the Quran. I'm using the yardstick of the atheist. I'm using the yardstick of the non-Muslims. For them, science is ultimate. I'm using their yardstick, science, comparing with me my yardstick, the glorious Quran, and I'm proving to them what you have come to know today, yesterday, my Quran mentions 1400 years ago. So for me, Quran is ultimate, not science. I am using his yastik and comparing with my yastik. So with the help of the Quran, I have proved scientifically the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anyone who's logical and scientific, after hearing this talk, has to believe in the existence of the creator, the sustainer, the maker, the manufacturer, who we call in Arabic as Allah. That's the reason the famous philosopher Francis Beacon said, little knowledge of science makes you an atheist, but an in-depth knowledge of science makes you a believer in God. That's the reason today scientists are not eliminating God, they're eliminating models of God. La ilaha illallah. I'd like to end my talk with the translation of the verse of the Quran which I started my talk with from Surah Fusilat, chapter 41, verse number 53, which says, Sanurim ayatina fil afakhi, wa fi anfusihim, hatta yatabayyana nao anna alhaq. Soon we shall show them our signs in the furthest regions of the horizons until it is clear to them that this is the truth. So Allah takes it upon himself that to every human being, he will show them the signs in the furthest regions of the horizon until it is clear to them that this is the truth. I would like to end my talk with the same statement. No God, no peace. No God, no peace. N-O God, N-O, no God, N-O, no peace. K-N-O-W, no God, K-N-O-W, no peace. Wa akhir dawan, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.